Welcome back sports tonight on Channels Television. We were talking about the Nigeria Professional Football League before we went on that break. And you guys are also uh, talking about it. Keep those comments coming on Twitter channels, on the sports, Facebook channels, I think sports, our own football. Let's support it. Adams Jesse says, um, it was the first win in five games for Nasara United against Play 2 United. It was a spectacle to behold as Nasara United got the three points. Play 2 United have been a decent team. But scoring is a major problem for them. And one way yes. you can grow is when you play in front of your home fans. But because of the problems that we saw at the start of the season, they have to live with that. Also, they have lost a top, top striker, Tosia Moyoli from last season, who was imperious. They've lost him to... <laughs> He's gone again. So you ask yourself, look, you bring a player in from Oshun United, he has a good season, and oof, off he goes. And you're asking yourself, now who's replacing him? And then the same season, you lose your top striker, you lose your manager who won you the league, mm -hmm. and you bring in one who hasn't even won a league title. Look, a lot of changes happen in the league, and you can't expect things to remain the same for the same team. That changes a lot. Yeah. And that is one thing that we cry out about a whole lot about the league. But hey, nothing changes. Also, their fans are not helping matters. They've become so used to winning, and they've, they have this false sense of entitlement that they need to pick wins at home yeah. and then they, they resort to violence and everything. Uh, and that's what happens. The players are never comfortable playing away from home. So the LMC says, because of what they did, they banished them to Illorin at first. Yeah. Then they say, oh, it's going to tell on logistics. They, they go Lafayette. to Lafia, they cause trouble in Lafia. Yeah. You see what we're saying? That is why we need to put our foot down when you say something. You stick to it so that persons we know that we mean business. Uh, but, but, but then, Austin, I think it, it just made sense to take them back to Lafia because... Mm. Uh, it, it, it is not just Nasara uh, play to United who will suffer the punishment. The away teams they play will equally suffer. Because let's say I plan my league season and I plan to go to play two, and then I have to travel all the uh, way to Illinois. No. So for the away yeah. team, that is, that, that's a change in logistics and it, it, that's more cost on you. So I, I think it made sense to put them in Lafayette. But hey, if the fans won't learn, they won't learn. And it, it boils down to this point again where we, it's beyond educating our fans. Yeah. I think we need to change the demographics. Yeah. We need to make this league appeal to a different set of fans. At the current rate, no one will benefit. Mm. No one. Very deep. But that's it. Um, development is a gradual movement towards advancement. But we must be ready to take those steps. We must be ready to put take decisions that will lead towards achieving development. Um, Net Blaster says, on paper... Uh, Aqua United are meant to be better than what they have now. So I'm not really surprised where they are bouncing back. Meanwhile, um, I'm happy uh, we recorded another away victory without any fights. Beautiful. <laughs> and that's what it should be for the love of the game. If your team is playing at home and they don't win, you should think that, oh, they, they won their last two home matches and they've lost this one. It's football. Isn't it a shame that we even have to celebrate when away teams go and win and fans do what fans are supposed to do? Go back to your houses. You don't have to win every time. Mm. Isn't it a shame? It's a reflection of where we are in the league right now. When teams lose at home, it's no problem. Go home. Yeah, yeah. you are aggrieved, but you don't have the right Support to... Support your to, team more to start I mean, winning. you don't have the right to, to incite violence. Just go back home. Yeah, you are aggrieved, but show it to the, to the players. They will come and apologize you, you fight but players. don't fight them. <laughs> don't fight the officials. Don't cause trouble. Yeah. Don't destroy things. Just mm -hmm. go home. But here, mm -hmm. we now have to celebrate the fans for doing what fans are supposed to do. Too. Come on. No. This is where we are, and it's an embarrassment. No. Yeah. I know. Uh, talking about uh, the national under-20 team, the Flying Eagles, Olatunde Tijani says, part of development is to have a winning mentality. There are times when a team loses that fans know they gave their best and were just unlucky. The team should improve more on teamwork and good finishes. That's what Coach John Obu says that we've seen them play just two. Let them play NJ, play again, and if possible, go to the World Cup and play some more that we can judge them. Adams, Jesse says, uh, we have some exciting youngsters in the present under 20 setup. Uh, there's Nafizi, there's Alassan, there's Utin, and the likes. I want to believe these boys are primed for the top. Let's wish them well. That's all we can do. Uh, it's developmental football, and we just hope that they will get the support that they need to keep uh, getting better. Let's get on with the show now. I talked about uh, the, fit, the latest FIFA ranking. Let me just get to lose view so as regards that one. Um, the Super Eagles dropped two places. Yeah, again, as expected. Every time we don't play, mm. every time we are inactive, we drop. Uh, yes, I, I'm not sure. I've not looked through it, so I don't but know. But there are times we play 
And we, we will win. Drop. Yeah, and we and drop. We drop. <laughs> uh, look, it, it's funny. It, it, at the time, I tried to understand how this whole thing is calculated. And then I thought I had a grip on it. And then the next FIFA ranking came in, and I was wondering, okay, what just happened? <laughs> so I, I stopped bothering myself. Yeah. Because this is, yeah, they matter when they matter. I mean, when we're talking of seedings mm. for, for major tournaments yeah. and, and so on and so forth. However, look, it's just the FIFA rankings and the players, the I'm, boys haven't played, the team haven't played. So no, no pressure on anybody. When we get back to play, well, AFCON is a couple of months away. When we get back there and we'll play competitive games that have high scores, I think we should be jumping back up on the rankings. Okay, so that's it. Uh, the top 10 uh, ranking for Africa, Senegal, um, still on top. Uh, with, uh, with Dream 24th in the world. Uh, in second, we have Tunisia. Morocco is third. The Super Eagles of Nigeria, they're fourth. Uh, DR Congo, fifth. Ghana, sixth. Cameroon is seventh position. Egypt is eighth. Burkina Faso, nine. And that's surprise, surprise. Kamali down there. Uh, you would have argued that Mali will not be there, but that's it. That's the FIFA ranking, the latest one uh, for Africa. Let's see the world top 10. Belgium, uh, France, Brazil, Croatia, England, Portugal, Uruguay, Switzerland, uh, Spain, and Denmark. That's the best uh, football playing nations top 10 uh, in the world. So that's what it is. Uh, this is the FIFA ranking. This is what it is. When it comes out, uh, we take it. Uh, let's see. Uh, but sometimes the rankings are good because um, federations look at it and say, look, look at where we are. We need to, to get, to get, Tell you what, to Austin, get better. what, If we are to play Denmark tomorrow in a competitive game, I won't be scared. Even though they are tense in the ranking. You won't be scared? No, I won't be Even scared. Even when you, Denmark was decent at the World Cup. Yeah, they were decent at the World Cup. If we are to play them tomorrow, I won't be scared. If we had faced them at the World Cup, I wouldn't be scared. I wasn't scared of Croatia until Croatia got to the final of the World Cup. Really. There you go. Yeah. And but, I they, thought, but they were better on the rankings. Even yeah, Iceland they were better was on better. The rankings. And I thought yeah. that game, barring those two errors that led to those both goals, we could have ended in a draw. I think we played well against them. Yeah. So really, the rankings aren't the best reflection of how you good a team what the ranking does. The, the ranking works um, in a very funny way. It gets you and I talking. Yeah. More pundits talk yes. about it. Analysts talk about it. And that's why I hate it. And, <laughs> and, then, and then those teams that we're talking about, for instance, I was shocked to see Mali ranked 10 then, in Africa, yeah. you know? I was like, Mali, and I can see Burkina Faso there. So Mali looks back and said, did you hear what that guy said about our football? <laughs> so we need to keep, keep talking about it. Let's wrap up the show this way. Let's, you know, uh, that Alexander Safarin, uh, that's FIFA's, uh, UEFA's uh, president, has been re-elected on a post as president, as president of European soccer body UEFA for a four-year term at an annual congress in Rome earlier today. Under UEFA status, Seferin, as the only candidate, was voted in an acclamation, a round of applause for the delegates of the 55 member associations. He's been trying to, you know, give power to some of those uh, countries in Europe that are not so relevant in football. So I guess that's why I say, keep it going. Still being charged. So look, it's four years already. Uh, last out time disappears. I must <laughs> say thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Time on it's the a show pleasure. Tonight. Thank and you very you, much. What can I do without you guys? Thank you so much for doing this with us. But remember to keep talking to us on Twitter, channels on the sports, Facebook, channels I have sports. For the team, I'm Austin Okonak. I'll be back again tomorrow. But until then, in everything you do, remember, keep talking sports. Bye for now. <laughs>